Chatty with the Leather Lady. We're going to be talking about billets today. Um, not only the different kinds of billets that maybe your saddle has, but what it is when I do repair them and how I go about doing that. Some people have had questions, um, and it all is dependent on the saddle maker or the repair smith that is working on your saddle. But I like to educate. So I'm going to show you a little bit, a few different kinds of billets. Um, and behind me here, I've got a, a all-purpose saddle, a jumping saddle you can actually replace. It doesn't matter what kind of English saddle it is. Usually there's three billets on a saddle. Um, and the two out, outer billets are your support for your girths. Um, and sometimes you use that third. Anyway, let's get going here. So I've got a bunch of different billets in my hand. Um, and what we're going to talk about is the different kinds. So when you come to me and say that I want my billets replaced, I may be asking you questions. Well, is your billet a biothane billet? Is it a um, web billet? Is it just a leather billet? Does it have a backing on it um, or that kind of a thing? Okay, so I'm going to show you this first one here. This is a biothane billet or a beta billet, and you'll see that it's beginning to crack. Okay, I'm going to hopefully I'll get some lighting in there and you'll see some cracks in it. This is very typical of these kind of billets. Now what's inside this billet is a webbing. So there is a plastic coating on the outside, which is beta or biothane, and um, inside is webbing. So even if this cracks, um, that webbing inside is not cracked, okay? So it is still holding it together and that's the support of these. Are these good to have? They don't last as long um, just because the weather does crack them, sweat and that kind of a thing. But they are uh, very much about rainproof um, and proof in the Northwest. All right. Um, and then we have a, a leather billet that is just a plain billet, which is all stretched out. Okay. With holes on the end. Each depends on the saddle maker, how they are attached. So this one's just a straight attachment. Some are like a letter M attachment. Um, that's just basically for knowledge for us. But you'll notice that these are um, oval holes. It really doesn't matter if it's an oval hole. It's just sort of a preference depending on who is making the saddle. Um, because your girth uh, connector, your hardware, is a round thing. So I make my holes round. I, if you want them oval, I can do that upon request. However, I make them round. Now, what kind of leather do we use? We use a pretty, probably a six to eight ounce leather, which means of the thickness. Um, so this one here has no backing, okay? There's no backing on it. It is just a solid piece of leather. I like those. because And you also have a quality leather. Um, sometimes you'll use an English leather. I use a heavier skirting leather, and then I go ahead and skive it and thin it to where I need. So every saddle is completely different on the length of their billets and also the width of their billets and how, how they are made. Now, this is the interesting one. I think Steuben uses this kind. I could be wrong, um, but I think they do. Um, but this billet here, if you look at it from one side, it looks just like with the other billets, right? Okay, but look at, if you open it up, it's been all stitched and inside is your webbing. So even though, and this is very, very thin leather, this is going to be what your English half shaps are made out of. Okay, very, very thin. So um, it's very supple, which is a good thing. However, it doesn't hold up. You can see the holes. It rips really, really easy. I don't like making these, but if you need them made, I will. Um, because too, you've, again, if you see this webbing, the webbing is solid in one place, no rips, no nothing. However, look at those holes. Completely stretched out completely. Whereas if you're actually using a complete leather piece uh, for your billet, those holes aren't stretched very far. The reason why she wanted this one replaced is because the other two, and she just wanted to make sure they all look the same. This is a perfectly fine billet. It's still got, you know, life in it. Okay. But it is stretched out. All right, so those are the type of billets um, that you will find. Um, I have to see what the saddle is like in order to know what kind of billet I'm gonna build. So I've got three saddles that need billets and I would love to make all those billets at the same time because it'll save me time. It's more efficient, more effective. 
However, I have to wait till the saddle comes in or have you send me a photo of your billets so that I can actually get the dimensions and the length, and then I can go ahead and build them. So sometimes I'll ask you to, as a, as a client to send me your picture of your billets. And so what you would send me, and here is what we're going to look at, this area here where the billets need to be replaced. Now this person wants all six billets replaced, okay? And then some of these have the, the guard, the billet guard here, and that can just but what you can do to help me out so that I can be more effective if I've got a lot of billets to make is to go ahead and measure from to the tip and then the width. I don't care about the thickness because I can alter that with my sky. So when I ask you, because if you look at this billet, it is all stretched out. The holes aren't even, even anymore. You look at these holes here, this is completely stretched out. I will almost guarantee that this le these leathers did not come from this same cow because it's very different. And also too, it's stretchable, so it's probably more close to the belly of the cow. Because leather close to the belly, um, if you have the belly of the cow, um, we use that for special different things, not for billets, because if we did that, we would stretch and this would take Okay, you got to think of a cow when a stomach starts to expand and come out, that skin has to be really flexible there. But when I get a hide in and I go pull the hide, I can actually stretch it. So I need to be really, really careful where I'm taking my leather from, from that part of the cow. So you look at this one here, there's no way that this person could use the outside billets when he really, really needs because they're so far off. And if you are, then you're actually got the front part of your girth really nice and tight, and this back part isn't as tight. Now, if that back part was to actually snap, or the front part was to snap, yes, you have this. However, it could actually be loosening too loose, and that could be really, really dangerous. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna pull these billets off. And then when I return, I'll show you um, what it looks like without the billets and then we'll go from there. All right, I hope this is informative and we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, um, so I'm gonna get ready. I've cut those billets off and I'm gonna get ready to um, cut some billets here. I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I'm talking about as far as like cowhide and belly and where we don't want to have it come from. I know this probably isn't gonna interest some of you past this, but. Um, here's the thing. I have an old hide. Well, not old, but I have a hide crap from what I have had from before. So if you look at this, um, this bottom part here is the belly. So I, if you noticed, I keep cutting away from that area because I don't want um, that is going to stretch or not need to stretch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to make some patterns off of these billets and I will try to go with the grain of the cow. Um, it just makes it easier. It's also better. Um, this is a little bit thicker than eight ounce. So I'm probably going to sky but maybe an ounce off of it um, because I like them a little bit heavier than this. However, when we go ahead and condition it, oil it, um, then it will make it actually much softer because this is a, a really good hide I've used for many, many projects. But that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take these. I'm going to make them as a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and cut straps. I have a strap cutter that I use. And then I'm going to place the holes in there. And I'm going to do all six that way. And then I'm going to get ready to bevel them, uh, which make the sides nice and rounded and smooth. And then I'm going to get ready to dye them and then condition them. And then we can put them back on the saddle. So the next step I will show you will probably just about the time to, and we'll start from there. Okay, so we have our billets cut out. Okay, I've got six raw billets here. Okay, and so um, what I did with these is I marked the back. So we look at it and we've got the same length, same width. Um, I marked the back because I'm gonna make a um, point on that. And then I flipped it over and made the dots where I'm going to punch the holes. But first, what I have to do is check and make sure that the width or the thickness of this leather is going to match what the billets were that they had on theirs. Because we want to get close to the most 
original as we can um, of what the saddle maker had made for them. So I look at the width, the, the thickness. Now this is really, really worn down. You can see it's a pretty thick leather, okay? And then you look at this piece and you're like, wow, that's really, really thick. But if we put these two side by side, um, I, and you can't really tell, but they are pretty close the same. One is just worn down and also one is skived, which I'll, or one is beveled, excuse me. And then um, also too, um, it's all rubbed down with uh, beeswax and, and finished. So, but I'm gonna show with you here, if I need to uh, make a thinner billet, let's say I need to do something um, that is thinner to thin leather like this. I would definitely use a different hide. However, I have a machine where I can actually thin it down. So if you look at this piece, it's very thick. And if you look at this one, um, I guess you can't see it too well, but if I put them on top of each other, you can see that they're different thicknesses. So I can make them pretty uh, thin and I can actually shave it down to something very, very, very thin. Also almost thin. So it all just depends on what the billet is made of um, thickness. And so I go from there. So my next step is I'm going to bevel the edges. I'm going to tape and smooth those edges down. I'm going to make my point and then I'm going to point, uh, punch the holes in. Now, when I do that, um, I use more uh, professional punches. I use the smallest that I have. These are punches that you use hammer. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, leather hammer on. Um, some people may use the actually old fashioned hole punch. I don't like using those because we're working with a heavier thickness. I like to be accurate and make try to get as straight as the line as I can. Some of these times if or some of these if the guys with the uh, the wheels, they if they get old, sometimes they can slip and then they can actually make that hole longer elongated, which I don't want to do. So I want to try to get as close to what we were doing as before. But like I said before, um, I do round holes because they're going to stretch anyway. But if you want oval holes, holes, let me know and I'll do that. So let me go ahead and get these billets ready for um, dyeing because we want to match the same color as what they have here. And then we'll go from there. Okay. All right, we're back. And we're at the dyeing station here at my in my shop. Um, I've already dyed the six um, billets. However, I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, this is the billet that is dyed. Um, and once I put out a little bit more oil to it, it's going to get a little darker. I don't want to get the brown any darker um, because I do want to match um, those other billets that we had originally. Now, when we do dye, though, it is becomes really hard because we use, I use um, the free bean dyes. Um, these are some little ones. I keep a lot of different colors on the stack and it's an alcohol base. So um, we want to make sure that we take care of that leather because it completely dries it out. It's skin, guys. Um, so it's like your skin. You have to put moisturizer back into it or it dries out and cracks. Same with cowhide. So I've just got a sample of one that I sort of messed up with and it's way too short. Um, maybe for a child saddle, it would be okay. But um, this is now beveled. It's got it's got a nice edge to it, um, the back, and then I've also skived the end so that it sort of um, is a very nice smooth edge. So it flattens out as I sew it on. Um, and then when I get done with this, and you've got your point on there. Very nice. Now there are there are stamps that you can use for points. Um, I just do them by hand because I don't want to spend the extra time. I don't have to. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some water. And I'm going to apply it over the leather. Okay. And this helps the dyeing process. And I put it over all of it and I get it nice and damp on all of it because it gives it a nice even. So you don't have to do this. However, I've learned over the many, many years that I've been doing this that if I do do it, um, I get a nicer, more level uh, dye. Okay. I don't get a splotchy corners or whatever. So that's all nice and dyed. And while I get myself ready, normally I put my gloves on and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to sort of let this soak in for a few seconds. Now I have some dark brown dye that I'm using 
And so I put it in a little container. I like to keep it in a container that I'm using so I know which, how much I'm using and everything for that specific project. And I have to put a cover over it because it's alcohol. So it does dissipate, okay? It does evaporate, excuse me. So I'm just taking a large dauber that I have. You could use like a piece of uh, sponge or whatever you wanna use. However, I'm using a dauber in this case. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try to do a close up here um, when I edit this, hopefully, uh, that you can actually see the dye go on. Okay. And then I just dye the whole piece. Because I don't want to leave that backside raw, just don't. Um, then we'll seal it later with a sealant. And there you have a dyed gill. Now it is going to soak in. You see that tiny part that is, it's gradually going away. It is. So then after I get done with this, um, I'm going to, I'm going to let this sit there and dry. And then when I get done with it, I will put a coating on. Um, it's a leather finish as you bring so that it doesn't come off on you. Now, if I dye something, I have to put a coating on it or it's going to come off on your clothes or whatever. So I need to do that. Once I get that, um, once I get it oiled and finished and everything and I finish it, then we go ahead and sew it back on the billet. So the next step I'm going to show you is that, um, and then the other thing too is I take beeswax and I uh, beeswax these edges down. So remember how nice and smooth those edges were on the old billets? Um, that's how they get that. It's either, it's it's um, burnished, excuse me, burnished. So it's burnished usually with some type of wax um, for those edges. So once that gets done, this is gonna be all nice and supple and I will show you them right before I sew them up. What I'm going to do next, I am going to make holes in these so that it'll be easier for me to hand stitch on. So when I get to that point, I'll show you that. Alrighty, we are back and we have three of the billets on. I should say I have three of the billets on. Um, so these billets are going to be a little bit darker because of the oils, but they will lighten up um, as the oil dries a little bit more. Um, but they are done now. And if you notice, the thing about putting billets back on a saddle is when you do that you've got to be really extremely careful because you want these last three holes to be the same on the saddle so when it lays the way that it's supposed to when the horse is, it's on the horse um, then they will lay so that the, all the holes are even um, and as it wears a little bit they're going to stretch but however they're right now all where they need to be so this saddle also has a um leathers protector and this here we are going to go ahead and put on back on um, and i do make these protectors as well um, for dressage or all purpose um, and i can um, make them any length any size or whatever that you need so we have that back on there and once we get the other side done this saddle is ready to go so I appreciate you watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this and then um, please watch more videos if this is helpful to you. And thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget leatherladyllc.com. Take care.